Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 33 and here's what's coming up in today's episode. This looks like a decent little wildcard option for the future. Slovakia got us a couple of decent players already. We take a trip to Old Trafford to take on Manchester United right now, sat in 7th place as a win in this game will keep us top of the table to start the new year off. Kasper Dolberg is the fourth choice you guys can vote for. I think it'd be a really interesting signing too, because I don't recall ever having Dolberg before, despite the fact he's one of the best young strikers you can buy. So lots of stuff to get through in today's episode, and let's keep the comments about the shambolic attempt at a goatee to a minimum, shall we? Let's just say I went out on Friday night, lost a bet of a couple of friends, and this is the result. That's all you guys need to know. So here in today's episode, uh, again, a couple of big games for you today. Plus, we start to some stuff with a scouting update and an academy update. And of course, don't forget, we are going to find out what's going on with Alexander Mitrovic. My transfer committee, you guys have voted on the decision, and we'll find out what happens to the Serbian striker in today's episode. So starting off with the scouting updates here, plus a, uh, a confirmation that Jo and Francois, two of our fringe players, have both now left the club as the transfer window is now open. And there is a bit here for Ryan Sessignon as well. Well, let's take a look at that one. Actually, no, Steven Sesson on his brother. Uh, £310,000 bid. Uh, I don't think Ryan's brother's going to make it here, so I'm okay letting him go if he wants to leave. And as we take a look at the scouting updates as well, uh, we're starting off with our scout currently based in Slovakia. This goalkeeper could be all right, but not too sure just yet. Uh, Branislav Tesa is going to get an academy deal. Uh, as his dollars out, I'll tell you what, Slovakia at the moment, they've produced a couple of really good little talents. Another one could be there as well. We can see the scouting for the time being. This looks like a decent little wildcard option for the future. Slovakia have got us a couple of decent players already. are only three months into the mission as well, so we're only a third of the way through, and they've, they've got some good players so far. Next up is Sweden. We're going to continue the scouting on all of these guys, apart from the guy right at the top there, Hans Nystrom, who's going to get an academy deal. 18 years old, 54-66 overall. We'll find out how good he is today. And the third and final country is Mexico. Moyano and Bustos will continue our scouting on, but Maldonado, a 15-year-old goalkeeper, already six foot three, 52, 70 overall, 79, 94 potential. He's going to get an academy deal. I must say, in this year's FIFA, I'm finding it really easy to pick up good academy goalkeepers. There's another one right there. And now an updated look at the academy as well. I must say, there's a wealth of youth talent here. There's lots and lots of really good prospects, including this guy, Marvin Janssen, 91, 94 potential. I'm I'm really excited about the future of these boys coming out the academy. We've had a couple of decent players coming out so far. None better, of course, than Jay Baker, but there's some really good prospects here. If we promote them during the season and give them some game time in the second half of the season, there's, there's a few who I think could be really good, but uh, Schoberg is going to get released right at the end there. And before we play our first game of today's episode, a massive clash away at Old Trafford against Manchester United on New Year's Day. The transfer committee have decided what we do with Alexander Mitrovic. We could either sell him, bring in a striker, sell him, bring in a winger, loan him out or keep him and your decision is to sell him and bring in a new strike and it's funny as well because in the voting the the fourth uh, most voted the least voted option was to keep him you know such a low return this season for Mitrovic only the one goal scored I think you guys as well as me know his time I think I'm watching on today his time is up you know last season he was fantastic my player of the season but this year those stats just make for painful reading, don't they? He's had a really poor year. You guys think it's time for him to go. Mitch Rich, he's on the transfer list. It's time for the Serbian to go so, to go elsewhere. So jumping into the first game of today's episode on what a massive battle. We take a trip to Old Trafford to take on Manchester United right now, sat in seventh place as a win in this game will keep us top of the table to start the new year off. Uh, United lining up in a 4-3-3, a fantastic side of a great front trio of Rashford on the left, captain Jesse Lingard, on the right and Romelu Lukaku their striker today and we count that 4-3-3 with one of our own our most consistent lineup this season with our brilliant front trio of Sancho on the left Neres on the right and Balotelli the striker come the end of the game we're exactly halfway through the season let's get the win and make sure we're top come on Fulham the visiting team have been undoubtedly the best defensive team in the division but that defense will be put to the test here it's a wonderful asset to have, isn't it, on the road, coming to a, a ground like this and to know that you really have got a good defence. Back-to-back wins and back-to-back -back clean sheets to end the calendar year off. Great way uh, to enter the new year. 
but of course after a shaky run of form to start December, we haven't actually played that well in the past five or six weeks, so really important test this one. To start the new year off, we want a win. Let's see if we can get it. Fossey went to down the right, finds Neres, and Neres steps inside as he likes to do, and goes for goal. The hail of a simple save though, but a good start. First shot, first shot on target, good set the tempo early. We want to play this game at our pace, you know. We like to push the pace. We like to get the ball forward quickly for quick shots and quick attacks. And here we go again. Seri on the ball, rolling it through to Sancho. He is onside there. Held his run well. Dinks one in, headed away. But right now, it's all full and start the game off. Burge finds Kearney, who can strike him. Shot blocked. And Manchester United clear. Neres wins it back, though. And Burge, as we know, can also strike him this season. Sander goes for goal. And this time, to the post. Great start by Fulham. I say this quite often, but you want to have the first shot on target in the game, the first few attempts if you can, to let your opponents know you're here in this game to win, not just get a point. And uh, as things stand, it's, it's Fulham starting off the stronger team as we look for that opening goal. Sessignon rolls it through to Seri. And Sarah give it back to Ryan Sessignon, down his left-hand side. Might be playing in a more defensive role this season, but he still likes to get forward. But that pass is poor, though. And Manchester United get it back. We give it straight to Balotelli. And Balotelli through to Sancho. And Sancho. And Sancho. And Sancho. 1-0. And there is the goal. And it was coming. Fast start from Fulham. And Jaden Sancho, who's blown hot on cold this season at times, has been a little bit disappointed. But he's got the quality to finish like that when stepping inside. 1-0 Fulham. And there's the breakthrough. Fossimenta tackles Rashford and now Seri to Sander Burge. And Burge into Balotelli, flicks to Kearney. Brilliant football from Fulham. It's David Neres stepping inside. David Neres, great save by De Gea. And Balotelli's header is going to trickle wide the post. But De Gea prevents it from being a goal kick and claims the easy loose ball. Still 1 0. It's all Fulham in these 33 34 minutes. We should be two or three goals up here. And if we continue to attack like this, we'll definitely go two goals up before the break. And that should do it for a first half where Fulham have been dominating. Everything has gone according to plan so far. Can we get one more chance before the break? to go two goals up. Kearney okay. finds Sander and Sander releases Seri and Seri goes for goal and if it wasn't for the brilliance of David De Gea this afternoon we would be three or four goals up at half time. No wonder he's shouting his defenders because right now it's all Fulham. Crossed by Kearney, Balotelli can't win the header and that will do it for a picture perfect first half from Fulham. 15 minutes into the second half, still we lead by a goal. The only way we lose this game is by getting complacent, because right now we've got United where we want them, but as Lukaku has turned his man, he's rolled it through, and a great chance here. Oh, what a block by Ryan Sessignon. First sight of goal for the Red Devils. It should have resulted in a goal, but Ryan Sessignon showed what we can do on a defensive end. Great goal-saving block to keep us in the lead. Fantastic from our left back. Martial beats Jaden Sanchez to the ball now, and Amanda Matic finds Martial down his right hand side. 11 minutes to go. Still time for the Red Devils, but as things stand, our defense all game long has been standing strong. Let's make sure it stays that way in the final few minutes. Balotelli to Sander, into Kearney. Chance here for a second goal that could wrap it up. It's Jaden Sancho. It's Sancho. It's Balotelli. Oh, and De Gea, once again, is proving his worth. Great save. Just waiting for the final whistle to come any second now. And there it is. A huge win for Fulham. Three wins on the bounce. And we start the calendar year off with the win. And another clean sheet notched up as well. Massive victory. We're top of the table with half the season left. One of those games where we should have scored more and should have won by more. No doubt about it. Furry deserved the win. We controlled the tempo and the pace of this game right from the first whistle to the last. Exactly what we wanted to do. Playing at a fast speed and getting quick attack. So I wanted to find a score and a good man actually the game winner, uh, Jaden Sancho. Really nice finish after a nice step inside and a good performance from our new left winger. So I wanted to find a score and a big three points there. And just before our second and final game on today's episode in the FA Cup third round against Crystal Palace, uh, you can see right now there's still been no bids for Alexander Mitrovic right now on the transfer list. Again, if we sell him, we're going to get around 15 to 20 million pounds, I would probably suggest for our Serbian striker. And now I'm going to ask you guys, my transfer committee, what choice of five front men should we try and bring in if we do and go and sell Alexander Mitrovic in this transfer window? Now, I'll put five on a short list. I've varied up the options for you to give you different choices. It's going to be your decision, a poll in the top right, which striker should we pursue if Mitrovic goes in this window? So we're going to start off with Jean, Kevin, Augustine, the RB Leipzig striker, 22 years old, medium, medium work rates, four star skills and three star weak foot. This guy's pure pace, 89 acceleration, 89 sprint speed, 82 agility, and 86 attacking position should see him break through the offside trap pretty easily with some great technical stats as well with 86 finishing, 83 dribbling, and 83 ball control too. Bertrand 
Traore, who we had in our Watford career mode a few years ago. A right winger that can play as an inside forward with a left foot and can also play up top as well and be more direct. Four star skill moves, only a one star week for a bit of a concern, but high, high work rate and some brilliant stats. Like Augustine, really quick, 86 acceleration, 90 sprint speed and 91 agility with some fantastic technical stats, including 90 ball control and 86 dribbling with the flare trait as well. And again, varying up the options here, a couple of inside forwards for you, one on the right and now one on the left. Richard Leeson having a great season under Marco Silva at Goodison Park. Can play up front as well, of course, as we know. Four star skills and a five star week fit. You gotta love that. Also high, high work rate as well with the flare trait. Some great physical stats. He's strong as well as quick as well and technically too. Some really great stats on just a 22 year old. Kasper Dolberg is the fourth choice you guys can vote for. I think it'd be a really interesting signing too because I don't recall ever having Dolberg before despite the fact he's one of the best young strikers you can buy. 22 years old, 80 rated right now. He's six foot two, medium low work rate with a four star week foot as well. And he looks like the sort of guy that plays with power as opposed to finesse. Physically, he's relatively well rounded, relatively well balanced. Nothing really point, uh, jumps out at you so far though, but technically he's got 90 shot power and 86 long shots. This guy could be a real weapon from range with a power headed trait too. Should be a really good threat from corners. And the fifth guy you guys can vote for, I must say, is probably the most intriguing one out of the poll. Wesley from Ibar, 81 rated, 23 years old. And this guy looks like the upgrade from Alexander Mitrovic. His wages are really low as well, just 27 grand a week. So it won't cost too much in terms of his contract. He's six foot three. So a real physical presence with high, high work rates and 97 strength. He would be so hard to get off the ball. He's a real bully, Wesley. Looks fantastic. Some nice technical stats with 87 shot power as well. He would be a really strong option to replace Alexander Mitrovic. So five choice for you guys to vote for you on my transfer committee. Which one of these front men should we try and bring in as Alexander Mitrovic should hopefully be sold in this January transfer window? Five great options, lots of great versatility. The choice is yours. Vote in the top right. And as we jump into the second and final game of today's episode, nice little London derby here in the FA Cup third round as we play host to Crystal Palace at Craven Cottage. Uh, making quite a few changes to our line, but still quite a strong team out there in a 4 3 3 as our front trio now is Sancho on the left, Hudson Odoi on the right, and Calvert Lewin getting a rare start up top. And as for the Crystal Palace team, a very nice 4 4 2 quality throughout the team, right from the back and going forward as well, with Fulkrug and Tammy Abraham, a really physically strong duo, leading the line for Palace today. Okay, Hudson Odoi to Fossi Mensah. And now Jay Bacon released Callum down the right side with a lovely through ball there. And Hudson Adoy on the ball as Duarte and Rudiger to beat. He's taking it around Rudiger. He's found a bit of space. It's a great save by Geiter. Cleared away. And Bacon nods it back to Zambo. And he's ran into his own man. And Palace escaped. Great stop by Geiter. Last thing we want is a replay as Crystal Palace crosses the centre. And Koyate has fired at home. And we might not get one unless we can come from behind. Brilliant finish from Koyate. And Craven Cottage is stunned. Our first goal conceded after a run of three of clean sheets but what a brilliant volley nice little ball through great dink into the center Koyate lost his man and fires it past Ramiro wonderful goal well 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 check Koyate with a superb little strike there and Crystal Palace lead here at Craven Cottage and we need a response and Baker's going to try and provide it great stop by Geita and turn behind for a corner fantastic start to the game there's 16 minutes in but already a few good opportunities Baker's corner to the centre headed away by Koyate this has got goals galore in this game I'm feeling it Jay to Seri and now Zambo takes over and I'll try and release Calvert-Lewin and Dominic stepping inside, looking for a bit of space. He's found some. Calvert Lewin, that's got to be a penalty, surely. Taken down after the shot by Rudiger. Certain spot kick and a chance to draw back on level terms. Absolutely no doubt about it. Definite penalty and a chance to find that equalising goal. Seri standing over it. Has he got the best penalty stack? 68, I don't think that's right. Surely someone's got a better one than 68. No? Okay, well that's a bit concerning. I'm not very good at penalties as it is. I'm even more worried now. I'm going to go to Geiter's left hand side. It's going to be Jean Michael to take it. And it's saved. I wasn't confident. Geiter makes the stop and we still trail. Never confident from 12 yards and you can see exactly why. There wasn't a great spot kick. Comfortable height for Geiter to push it away. And the Spaniard making the save. Keeps his side up by one. And it could become two before the break. Koyate decides to cross. Kaika flicks on. Brilliant move. Oh! 
What a fantastic move and build up from Crystal Palace. Milivojevic storming into the area on the penalty spot with the half volley. Couldn't keep it down. That should have been two. 20 minutes to go. Balotelli on for Seri. We're going to go to a 4-3-3 attack and play Hudson Odoi as our cam with Calvert Lewin on the right hand side of the wing. Super Mario coming on and we need a super sub type performance if we are to get back on level terms here and force a replay. Baker whips one in to Mario. First touch puts it wide. Approaching the final five minutes, still down by a goal. We need an equaliser. Here's Jay Baker finding Mario Balotelli in behind the back line. He's got to keep his composure, and he does. And Mario Balotelli off the bench rescues Fulham and makes it 1-1. Four minutes to go. What a relief. With two minutes to go, that should be a replay at Selhurst Park confirmed. But my goodness, have we got away with this. And actually... Well, time for one last attack now. You might be through. We've won it through Calvin Lewin right at the death. What a finale at Craven Cottage. Dominic Calvin Lewin saying, Alexander Mitrovic, get gone. I'm the backup striker in this team. And what a turnaround for Fulham. Two quick goals right at the death. And Calvert Lewin has won it. Balotelli feeds him through. Dominic keeps composure. And how often do I say this about Calvert Lewin? He never ever, and I mean ever, lets you down. Keeps his composure, fires it past Guy who I think might have got a touch on the ball, but can't keep it out. Fulham 2, Crystal Palace 1, what a finish. What a finish to the game that was. Fulham steal the win to death and progress to the fourth round. And all those fans that left early, well, they will be very, very frustrated indeed. But Calvert-Lewin coming up big with the, well, virtually the final kick of the game, giving us the win in a great spectacle. Neither side deserved to lose this game really fantastic game a replay would have been the right result from this but we steal it right at the final few moments so two on the final score man who actually substitute Balotelli though came off the bench changed the game for us got us the equaliser and then set up the winner as well and this is why Mitrovic we don't need you Serbian get gone son it's all over your time is done we'll get someone new in we don't really need someone new Balotelli and Calvert-Lewin are more than good enough for me but that will in today's episode of Korea Mode guys so a big fan of your fortune really hope you have enjoyed it if you did enjoy today's episode please do drop a like as likes are of course very much appreciated and it really helps channel out as well uh, much love to you all have a fantastic day and don't forget my transfer committee you've decided the Mitch Rich is going to go I think you made the right call now you can decide who replaces him vote in the top right and tell me what striker we should try and bring in in this January transfer window much love guys have a great day and I'll see you for the next episode very soon bye